Sometimes we have a scenario where we need to find out the start of the month or end of the month using Power Automate. So how can we do that? In this episode, we will talk about that in detail. First of all, in one of the Compose action, I am printing UTC now to get the current date and time value over here. Now, I am taking one more Compose action below that to get the start of the month and to get the start of the month date, we have a Friday made function available, start of the month. And inside that, we can supply current date and time. So I'm just passing UTC now inside it. Click on add and here we are getting start of the month. Now, what we need to do here is we don't have a ready made function for end of the month. So basically, we will not add any 30 days or 31 days or 28 days in the current day. But what we will do here simply is there is one more function available in the Power Automate called add to time. And inside that, we need to supply four parameters. The first parameter is we need to supply the timestamp. Second is interval. Then time unit. Then format. This is the stuff we need to supply. So over here, what I'll do here is whatever the output from Compose 1 is there, I will supply that because I get the start of the month. Okay, start of the month will give you the first day of the month. Okay, so over here I'm picking up Compose 1's output. So that's how I will get the start of the month date, then comma. I need to supply interval. I am passing one month. So basically I am adding one month into that. Then time unit you need to supply as month. So supply that and then you need to provide the format which is optional. So I am supplying these three parameters at this moment. Let me add that. Here what happened here is start of the month let's say currently UTC now is let's say 28th of October. So start of the month I will get 1st of October. Now in Compose 2, I am using add to time, which will add one month into the current date. So what happened here is in 1st October, it will add another month. So I will get here 1st November. And the next step we need to do here is we need to reduce one day from this date and time to get the previous month's end date. Okay. So now we will add one more extra step over here. So I am adding one more compose action. And now what we will use here is we will use compose 2's output over here to subtract one day from that. So here we will use a formula add days and inside that we will supply a output of the previous one. So compose 2's output and minus 1 we will supply minus 1. Okay. And that is something which will give us the end of the month date. Let's do that. Let's say this flow. I'm testing this flow now. Manually test it. Run the flow. And done. So first of all in Compose action, I am getting the current date and time in UTC format. So you can see here what I have supplied here is this is the UTC time 28th of October. Okay. Now in Compose 1, what I'm getting here is I will get the start of the month, which is 1st of October, which I'm getting perfectly because currently it is 28th of October and start of the month is 1st of October. So I'm getting that date and time perfectly. Now I'm adding one month into the current time, right? So I will get exactly 1st of November over here. Perfect. So I'm getting the 1st of November. And now 1st of November, I will reduce one day. So I will get the end of month date for October. So I'm going into this particular formula. And over here, you can see that previous day is 31st of October. So I'm getting the end of date, end of month date as 31st of October, right? So this is the thing we need to do in order to get the end of the month date for the selected date. Alright, so hope this video is helping you and values your time. If so, hit thumbs up, subscribe my channel and don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching my content.